Dobra večer, one and all, and welcome to season two of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Tonchi Prusats, and I'm one half of the dynamic duo that brought to you the uh, Oz Crow Soccer Show in season one. The other half, unfortunately, he's a little bit ill tonight, um, Josip Zilic, but he was going to come in live from Elko Park in, um, in Geelong, in the northern suburb there of Lara. Because tonight, North Geelong are playing a crucial Australia Cup clash against Altona City. We will be crossing a little bit later on um, at about half time, which is in about 15 minutes there. And we'll be joined by um, a, a fella called Nick Kozdra, who is the um, a, a first team player for the North Geelong Warriors team. He is unfortunately injured, but he will be telling us what is going on. But tonight... Folks, major, major announcement. Josip, unfortunately, due to um, his new role as Football Operations Director at North Geelong, as well as a few other um, personal and business-related things, um, tasks and commitments, he's unable to, um, in 2023, um, be my right-hand man or left-hand man or however you want to talk it like that. So the big announcement, folks, none other than the legend of Sydney, MC Ante, Ante Grabovac is going to be the new co-host. He's looking a little bit grainy, but I think he's done that because he's used to the radio. He's not so much used to TV and uh, and the visual, but uh, he's, he's done that on purpose. Ante, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Brilliant. Thank you so much, Taunchy. What a wonderful, wonderful welcome. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for um, inviting me to be on the show with you and i um, looking forward to the next what 25 or 26 weeks or however long we are doing this uh, but yeah well, it should be should be a lot of fun that's right that's what we're planning on folks um 25 <laughs> episodes minimum minimum this year and that all depends on you the clubs out there in um in um streamland radio land whatever you want to call it um and sponsors we really really do need businesses small businesses to jump on board and help us out and support us um, Ozcrow Sports at G, uh, Ozcrow Soccer Show at gmail.com is our, is our email address. Get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us via our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. And we are going live and hopefully in the comments section, folks, pop down. Where, you, where are you from? Um, we've already got a lot of people there. Welcome back, guys. Hi, guys. Um, ho hello. All of that kind of stuff. We'd love to know where you're actually tuning in from. Um, if there's someone from Croatia, in fact, tuning in, even better. But, Ante, we go we go back a long way, mate. We go back to the old NSL days when uh, you were the Sydney Croatia media manager. I was the Melbourne Croatia media manager. We struck up a friendship, and that friendship went on to the Croatian Herald days. And uh, now we've gone uh, almost full circle, and we're back in, involved in the media side of things, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, that was a quarter of a century ago. I can't believe that, uh, Torchy, around <laughs> late yeah. 90s and all that sort of stuff. So it uh, were good times, though. We had a lot of fun, and obviously none of this technology was available. No. So, uh, you know, I was doing radio in, in Sydney here, and, um, yeah, we wouldn't even dream of, you know, connecting with Melbourne, and uh, here we are. So yeah. uh, it's, it's just brilliant. So yeah, should be good. Thanks. Folks, it's episode 31 of the Ozcrow Soccer Show. We will be this year bringing you lots and lots of news, views, interviews with, um, you know, everything that makes our Australian Croatian kaleidoscope, if you like, um, soccer kaleidoscope, just so unique, so passionate, so different, so proud. Um, um, and that's what we're going to be all about, pushing the positives. Yes, there's always going to be negatives and we can talk and harp on about that, but we're not going to try to do that. 
Um, we're always going to push the positive side of things. And it really is a celebration of our culture. It's a celebration of our background and indeed celebration of everything that we've achieved. And gee, we've, we, we continue to achieve. We're such a small community and small nation. But Auntie, mate, what, what, what's on the show first of all tonight? Who have we got coming on the show tonight? Jeez, let me tell Where you. First, start? we've got the news coming up very shortly. I think we're going to do a live cross over to North Geelong, where tonight we've got an Australia Cup match happening. Also, uh, there's a match over in St Albans. And then we've got a couple of very special guests, don't we, Taunchy? We do. Look, first up, um, on the weekend, just gone by, the IND Cup was held, or the IND Day, and it's basically a pre-season get-together of all five Croatian community clubs in Victoria and their junior clubs, junior teams. So the Mini Roos and their juniors, sub, um, sub NPL juniors. Uh, St. Albans Dynamo was the host as they are every year. And we're going to have a man who's absolutely synonymous with the junior side of things there at Churchill Reserve, Stepan Gal, will be joining us a little shortly. We tried to reach out to the president, Ilya Dragicevic, but uh, you know, we, 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 we featured him a little bit too much. So we need to kind of mix it up and have someone else involved. So Stepan will be joining us. Then after that, this club on Monday, which happens to be the 10th of April, or Deseti Travan in our, in our lingo, is celebrating its 70th birthday. They are undisputedly the 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 the, the most decorated Australian Croatian club um, ever with um, two national champions championships to their title. And um, oh, I tell you what, um, and there's a lot to talk about with this man, the president of Melbourne Knights, Pave Yusup, will be talking to us. Um, Auntie, about a month ago, the Croatian Soccer Federation, Football Federation, led by Marian Kustic, the president, Zlatko Dalic, the man himself, uh, Stipe Pletikosa, Petar Krpan, and Ozzy Joe Shimunic, originally from Canberra. They came down to Melbourne and to Sydney. Uh, were you involved in any of that? Were, were you, would you sort of come along to any of the um, events up in Sydney? Well, yeah, I was the MC actually. So <laughs> that was the uh, yeah. biggest okay. sort of honour that probably um, yeah. I've had uh, as an MC. So that was magnificent. Yeah, what a night. It Talk, was just, tell uh, us about the night, mate, up in Sydney. Oh, it was brilliant. We first started off with some folklore and then we ended up with, um, obviously, I mean, I've never seen, you know, grown men cry so much. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be standing next to Zlatko Dalic when he was speaking and just looking across that room and, you um, seeing people so emotional and you know yeah. it was just a month after the world cup obviously yep. and so you know th when the man speaks you can hear a pin drop and just every word um means a lot and so yeah it was an incredible night the whole the whole night went very well and it was great to have um the guys on the couch as you mentioned you know Ozzy joe and petar kirpan and stipe Fotikosa, and so it was great to have a bit of a chat with them along with Zlako Dalic and, you know, ask them a few very pertinent questions, of course. And yeah, it was a, you know, fantastic celebration. And of course, on top of that, it's, it was 65th anniversary of Sydney United. So it was a brilliant, brilliant night from start to finish. Now, our, 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 our colleague from last year, Josip Zilic, he's watching the show. Big shout out to Josip. Unfortunately, he, he couldn't, he couldn't be the uh, live cross out at North Geelong tonight. He's got the Lurgy, the dreaded Lurgy. That's a, uh, uh, got a hold of him, and uh, I don't know what sort of excuse that is, but uh, you know, he should should come on, come on, Josipe. Uh, I thought I thought he was a tough head, Segovac, but uh, you know, Malorakia, <laughs> Malorakia, <laughs> that's Camille, it, so, yeah. that's that, Tomu Fali. But um, look, the fallout of the Croatian delegation visit to Australia is that on Tuesday, um, jetting out of Melbourne and Sydney is a as an Australian Croatian under fourteen boys select team that is going to be travelling to Vukovar to take part in an international junior invitational tournament. Now, we'll find out more about that from Pave a bit later on because Melbourne Croatia are the actual organisers or co-hosts, if you like, of that. Uh, they're putting together the whole package and and, and coordinating everything. And uh, um, I, I do believe... Uh, one of the guys that that used to that went on on a trip about twenty years ago, similarly to Croatia, when it was the Kvarnerska Riviera tournament, um, Josip Lončarić is in fact one of the coaches there. So we'll find out more about that from Pave. 
Look, an action-packed show, folks, tonight. A lot to get through. We've got so much to get through, and we're going to start with the news desk, which uh, Ante has prepared straight after the break, guys. Don't go away. Thank you so much, Taunchy. All right. Have you got the uh, slides in the background? I have, mate. I have. Here we go. <laughs> Here they come. Yeah, let's start out west, where on the weekend, Western Knights had a big 3-1 victory over Forestville, and Gwellop, Croatia, came from behind in a big, big victory against uh, Dionella White Eagles, beating them by two goals to one. Two Jacob Williamson goals. One fantastic free kick at the end um, gave Gwellop the three points. Western Knights sit second on the table and Gwellop are seventh. It's only been two rounds over in WA. And this weekend, Gwellop are at home on Saturday, April 8th at 5 p.m. against Gosnell City. And Western Knights are away this weekend. So um, now, best of luck for those two. Can I just interrupt there very, very quickly with another news announcement? Another news announcement, aren't you? We've got to have them thick and fast this week. One of our advertisers, in fact, one of our sponsors um, is, is, is a man that's well known to yourself and to myself, an ex-Sydney sider now residing in WA, uh, um, Slavicek Studio Architecture. They have sponsored next week's episode. And he has nominated Western Knights. So uh, we look, we will likely have uh, the president of Western Knights, Dean Zlendich, and we're working on one other guest. So they'll be on next week. So they'll be able to give us a good rundown of the season so far, we, um, both on the field and off the field. But I, I, I just couldn't contain myself, mate. I just had to say it. There we go. You can jump in. That's no problem. And I'm going to jump in and say St. Albans are leading 1-0 in the Australia Cup fixture against Frankston. So that's uh, great news. Hopefully that continues. It's still nil all at North Geelong. All right. Next up, we move over to South Australia, I do believe, Taunchy. Yes. Where Port Adelaide Pirates um, were at home, but Adelaide Croatia Raiders took the points. And Adelaide Croatia Raiders are leading the table in first position. And their next match is... Actually, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. at the Croatian Sports Centre. So get on down there if you are in Adelaide and um, support Adelaide, Croatia. Over in Canberra, we had the big Croatian derby. One all between O'Connor Knights and Canberra Deacon. And Pax Manda there scored the equaliser for O'Connor. They came from behind. It's only round one. And they've got the week off already. No Easter games for them. So their next matches are on April the 15th. And there you can see them on screen. And a good crowd there, I heard, uh, about 500 or so for the Croatian derby, which is good for Canberra, and hopefully that continues. Yeah, in the background, we've got a couple of um, images from that, so uh, we'll be we'll be showing that while we uh, continue with the, uh, the, the rest of the um, news details. Exactly right. So we will move over after Canberra into Wollongong, and we've got the South Coast United they uh, lost, unfortunately, 5-1 to Bulleye. South Coast are not doing too well, sitting second last at this particular point in time. You can see their most recent form, a lot of losses there. Hopefully, they'll turn it around to, on Friday. They play Good Friday on April 7, 2.30 p.m., away to Tarawana. So good luck to South Coast there. Moving along now. Indeed. Gold Coast. So next... We've got the Gold Coast. Yes, their last match was a one-all draw against Sunshine Coast in the Premier League fixture, and they are sitting currently in sixth position. And their next game is on Saturday, April 8 at 4 p.m. against Brisbane City. That is in Brisbane at Imperial Corp Stadium. So just up the road for all the Gold Coast Knights fans. Moving on over into uh, Victoria. Now, we've already done South Australia. <laughs> so there we have it. And we've got the Avondale on the weekend. Avondale unfortunately defeated the Melbourne Knights by three goals to nil. Bentley Greens defeated St. Albans by four goals to one. And North Geelong unfortunately suffered a calamitous 0 7 result against Green Gully. As you can see, of the Croatian clubs, the Knights are sitting the highest in fifth position. And then we've got St. Albans in 12th and in 14th position, we have got North Geelong. So hopefully those fortunes can improve. 
In MPL2, Victoria, Dandenong actually had a good win, defeating Melbourne City by three goals to one, and Dandenong are currently sitting in 10th position. And the Easter Monday fixtures, we're going to be talking a lot more about this particular fixture, but Taunch has already mentioned it. Monday, April 10, 4 p.m., get on down there for the Croatian Fest start against huge. North Geelong, the big Croatian derby at Knights Stadium. It's Easter Monday, public holiday, Desiti Travan. I think Steve Tavanovac is flying down from Sydney and he bringing is, in harmonica, yes. so uh, get on down there. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, I can't wait oh. for that one. That's going to be huge. Now back to your hometown, Sydney, mate. Um, the, it was a big, big clash on the weekend, but just didn't go our way. What's What happened there? Unfortunately, we went behind after 50 seconds. It was a bit of a defensive error, and um, Rockdale were able to capitalise, and it pretty much got worse, and we were 3-0 down. Uh, then in the 50th minute, Arte Bakamaz unfortunately got a red card. We did get a consolation goal through Antelmi. We did have a couple of extra chances, but unfortunately could not come away with um, any more uh, basically positions on the posts, uh, so on the goal scoring uh, tally. So it was actually three goals to one in the end against a high-flying Rockdale Suns. And we've got the Easter fixture happening on Saturday, April 8, 3 p.m. home game against Blacktown City. So um, get on down there, all you Sydney siders, to watch Sydney United play. Chance to move up the ladder and, and catapult a couple of places up. Now, Hurstville Zagreb. This is your club, isn't it? Your 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 kind your home club. Uh, uh, how they go on the oh, how they go on the weekend? They're improving. They've had two wins on the trot, so uh, that's been really good. The two 0 win over Gladesville, and they've also got an Easter fixture on Saturday, April eight at seven pm versus Granville Rage. So um, get on down there on Saturday night, and and the boys with coached by Double Basic are uh, on the improve. In terms of Australia Cup, we already mentioned tonight, now playing, we've got St. Albans against Frankston Pines and North Geelong against Altona. Still in the Cup, we've got the Knights, we've got Dandenong, we've got the Western Knights and we've got Gwelop Croatia and we've got some big fixtures happening tomorrow night. So we have got Strathmore against Bentley Greens. It's Strathnava Reserve, is that how you pronounce it? Strathnava, Strathnava Reserve. Strathnava, yeah, that's North. it, that's it. <laughs> then we've got the Knights as well against Corio and Knights Stadium. And then on Tuesday, we have got Canberra Deacon against the Monaro Panthers at Riverside Stadium. And Hersel Zagreb, as we mentioned, against Sydney United at Penzers Park. And, of course, next Thursday, Sydney United are in action, their first match since, of course, they made the final Last now, the big question on everyone's um, lips, the big question on everyone's lips, will the dynamic duo be back commentating Zagreb Hurstville's game next Tuesday night? Um, <laughs> the plan is yes, but uh, you'll have to you ask Mr. Chavard. But yes, hopefully hopefully we will be, yes. It, oh, uh, it's, it. it's been a lot of fun and um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But get on down there to the game because it's great for the boys to um, to support them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, moving along. All right, then. So there we go. There's one last look at that particular slide. Um, and then we go along to uh, what's happening in Croatia. Um, well, there's a little bit of excitement left in the Croatian league. A, a week ago, it seemed done and dusted. But slowly, slowly for all you Hajduk fans, they're starting to claw their way back into contention. Um, Hajduk did win on the week on the weekend against Šibenik. That man, Marco Livaya, scored one goal, two assists, and um, geez, and apparently, like he's just come back from injury, and he's um, he's, he's he's after one training session, he's um, ripped out pretty, a, a match-winning performance, if you like, really. Uh, Dinamo Zagreb drew. He's on, on the fire. Weekend. Yes, Dinamo drew on the weekend against Gorica. Now Gorica's. Coach Jelko Sopic, he's a he's a character, isn't he? I love his um, press conferences because he, he he always pulls punches. He's not not scared to to hold back. He's um absolutely <laughs> he's um what's the word entertaining? I think is the best way to describe it. But uh, yeah, no, it's always good to what see what what he's uh got to do got to say. But uh, what's his ante? Bombo Maximiru Dinamo Zagreb doveo zviezdu Brazila. So uh um uh. uh Dinamo Zagreb has brought a Brazilian star. What is going on? Uh, as you can see, the date on that was at midnight on April 1. So the author was FG. And, of course, they were trying to uh, trick people to say 
hear that Neymar has actually signed for Dinamo Zagreb for next season. But of course, no one took the bait. But yeah, it was uh, interesting, particularly the comments on social media regarding yeah. this particular article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, anyway, we've got um, we've got a new segment that we've got um, something that you're going to introduce this year. Um, well, hopefully on a regular basis. Today is the fifth of April. What happened on the fifth of April? Yes, Torchy, if you can bring it up in the background there. I mean, on this day in 1987, it was actually round two of the West End NSL, if everyone remembers the old West End sponsorship. And on that day, particularly for us in Sydney, I was there at this particular match. It's probably one of the most famous Sydney Croatia victories, which was a 4-1 result against Sydney Olympic at the St. George Stadium. And if you look at that Sydney Croatia team, it included, you know, lots of Socceroos at that particular time. Then you had the imports like Vedan Rožić, Ante Rumora, Žarko Ođakov, of course. And uh, yeah, this is some uh, footage oh, from that actual news. match. And you can see the scenes in the background. What was going on. It was... Uh, it was a fantastic uh, afternoon and, and a great big victory. Uh, that was at uh, yeah, uh, St. George Stadium. Is I don't right? know if you can see it. This is this was at the old St. George Stadium. Here, look at this. Jacques Ojakov just taking the mickey out of uh, Gary Phillips. <laughs> and then he puts a bomb of a cross in. And then Arte Rumura flying header from inside, just inside the post. And Gary Meyer had no chance. This was just an incredible, incredible day. Please. One of the uh, yeah most... Uh, spectacular i mean yeah that was beautiful football and you know a star-studded team and uh on that was actually on this day on april 5 1987 36 years ago Taunchy. my goodness me look um, at this Tony one, Frank of my, and what, you, you, one of the most entertaining um well sydney united teams there's robbie slater scoring a goal there as well um look i mean if you fine. go through that team and there's a, there's also a melbourne croatia team there as well i'll look at the, some of the legends there robbie dunn yossi bishkic davidson tony lemazina from uh, ex canberra then you had paul lewis ian wallace and the tough scott himself terry hennessy was the coach there but uh you go through the sydney croatia team you know rojic shavo rumora ojakov Arnold, Jurim, Clinch, Slater, oh, Franken. It's just, it was just an amazing, amazing um, unit. Now, yeah, they, we're had gonna... a, they had a great the, the, the game before, just quickly, round one, it was actually 6 1 at Sydney United Sports Centre. Um, Sydney Croatia beat Melbourne Croatia. So, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a big start to the season. So, yeah, they had a great start, but then it fell away in 1987. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, we're, look, we're going to have to stop everything. We've got a live cross coming up from Alco Park in Geelong. Um, don't go away. On the line, we've got Nick Kozdra. He's uh, one of the senior team players at uh, North Geelong Warriors, and he's coming to us live from Alco Park. In um in North Ge in, in Geelong actually it's in in the Lara suburb. Nick, welcome to the Oscro Soccer Show. How are you? Yeah, good, Tonchi. How are you? Thanks for having oh, me. Ab absolutely fantastic, mate. It's half time there at Alco Park in the big Australia Cup clash, mate. What's the score? Hopefully, some uh, good one nil news. North Geelong at the moment. Yes. Um, snuck one in probably about five minutes before half time. So good start for the boys, and um, hopefully more to come in the second half. Yeah. All right, we're going to bring you up on this on the screen there. Um, oh, looks like Auntie's just a, a bit of a, a bit of darkness there, and Auntie's <laughs> he, he must have uh, must have he looks like he's frozen or something or other. Look, um, Nick, first of all, um, yeah, um, that's good. That's a good sign. One nil at the halftime break. Who, who do we say that scored the goal? Who was it? They just scored. Caleb. So Caleb, Caleb Mikulich got his first goal for the year. Ah, oh, that's good news. Auntie's back. He's back. There Auntie's we go. Back. Now, mate, um, on the weekend it was it was it was a bit of a disaster. Um, a seven 0 drubbing at the hands of Green Gully. Now, unfortunately, at the moment there's there's there was a coaching change as well, and and a legend of of Melbourne Croatia Melbourne Knights and North Geelong from his playing days is the caretaker coach there, Tommy Gavran. Um, was a real baptism of fire, but yeah, there's a lot a lot of injuries that happened. Yours your yours included. Tell us about that. Oh, it's, uh, we've had a bit of a bad run with injuries this year with a few boys missing. But um, I think over the next couple of weeks, we're going to slowly notice some of the boys coming back into the side, really giving us that depth and um, helping us drive forward, I guess, going forward. Auntie. 
Have we got you? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm back. <laughs> back. So you... I see we're leading 1 0. Is that right? Did I miss all yeah, that? Yeah, we're up 1 0. Um, Caleb managed to put one in just before um, just before half time, about five minutes before half time. Brilliant, brilliant. Have we had uh, any other chances? We did. We had another cut back saved by the keeper on the goal line, probably two or three minutes after that. Um, and Altona hit the post probably in between there somewhere. It's been a, the last probably five minutes have been pretty hectic down here. It's all been happening. Um, chances coming thick and fast, but um, I think we've been the better side. Yeah. Now Let's you're not playing, playing on the main. Pi- you're not actually playing on the main pitch. You're playing on pitch two, which has got far superior lighting there. We can see that in the background. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what's it like playing an actual competitive match on the second pitch there as opposed to the main pitch? Is it a bit different well, for the boys? It always is, especially um, over the last few weeks. We really haven't been training on it. And um, if you look at our track record over the last few years, competitive games on this ground, we haven't really done great. Mm. Um, normally going behind, um, I guess, back in the day, I was a little bit more against better opposition. Um, but tonight, I think we really look comfortable. We look very comfortable. They put the sprinklers on for a change. Pitch is nice and greasy, so the ball's still zipping about quite well. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of the other injuries that you, you, you mentioned, um, yeah, there's a young fella who's made a really big impact this year, Kai Williams, who's only a teenager still, and it's his first year, and he started coming off the bench and he became a regular. And I've, comment- I've commentated some of North Geelong's games, and he's a real excitement machine. He's also injured himself, is that right? Yeah, um, we're not too sure exactly the severity of it yet. Um I think he needs to go get a scan either. I think he got one today or he's going tomorrow. So I guess we'll find out the severity of it over the coming days. Um, yeah, hopefully it's hopefully it's not too bad because he's been electric. It's been really good to see a young boy really stepping up into that role this year and filling in for, filling in the void for a few boys that have been missed out, especially, you know, missing players like Lockie McGrath, who just energy and work rate's just been crazy. It's just phenomenal for us for the last few years. So... Um, really good that he's been able to slot in, but hopefully, hopefully he's okay. Now we've got a big game happening on Monday. Um, North Geelong um, visiting sister club Melbourne Knight, Melbourne Knights for Melbourne Knights is big. It's, it's not, apart from the uh, league game, it's a big game for them because they're I think fifth position at the moment. They need a win to stay there, but at the moment North Geelong in, in bottom spot desperately needs a win. One win and what is a seven seven losses so far. Yeah, or something like that. We something really like that, yeah. Too much. So I think we just look, we yeah. look, look forward. <laughs> it's a must-win game for both sides, but it is the, the night's 70th birthday bash. So it's a huge day. They're planning big celebrations throughout. Um, how 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 much are you look, is the side looking forward to that game? Obviously, tonight there was a bit of a distraction with the Australia Cup, but yeah, yeah. Monday, the big deal. I mean, I guess for a lot of the boys um, locally, um, being able to play against a team like the Melbourne Knights is always a big thing, um, especially not being able to play against it for a, a, a few years. So um, an occasion like this, I think it's going to have everyone nervy, but good nervy. You know, everyone's really yeah. going to be up for the battle. And it's just, I think we're just going to enjoy it at the end of the day. Um, hopefully we can just gain some momentum used tonight as a, as just it's a stepping fun. stone yeah. and um, really start to get things back on track again. It'd be, it'd be found, honestly fantastic to get a win against them on Monday um, on their soil. And then we can steal the celebrations from them. So, Fantastic. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so, so yeah. What, what, you know, what's the reasons behind the seven losses? Have we, have we been close in some of the games or what's been going on, Nick? Well, look, it's, it's hard to say. I think um, you can say injuries have been an issue. You can say many things have been an issue. I think... We just haven't been up to it. Um, just I don't know. It's 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 a hard one to say. There's a, there's a whole number of things that have you know, that just haven't been there. But I guess we've just got to put all that behind us and really just focus on bringing ourselves together as a group and and playing like it's you know it's like your last game and really start yeah. enjoying it because if you're not enjoying it, you're really not going to start playing well. So I think yeah, we just need just need that little bit of confidence and we can really go forward and and um, start pulling some results together. Now, last year we saw um, uh, virtually the, well, virtually the entire midfield has left from last year. So we've got players like Noah Skorko, who's now doing big things in Croatia, 
Anthony Leban, also in Croatia, Niki Volarovic, Luka Skorko, and, and they all are, are doing you know quite well in, in, in Croatia. Obviously, Noah, who's, who's playing for Hajduk Split Juniors, we, we know all about that. But, yeah, um, we can say we developed him. Yeah, yeah. Abso- but, yeah. absolutely. It's a stepping stone, <laughs> isn't it? That's right. And, and it must be pleasing to see, you know, players that you were playing with, you know, last year, now they're, they're doing it well in Europe. But um, there's a lot of younger players now coming through the ranks. So we mentioned Kai Williams, but, you know, it's players like George Ellis, uh, Matty uh, Storšić. Um, there's a couple of other players as well coming off the bench as well in, in recent weeks. That, that production line, the talent or production line is, is just seems to be endless down at Elko Park. What's what's the secret there in these talented youngsters coming up through the ranks? I don't know what they're putting in the water bottles down here, but there are some really good players coming out of the club. Um, well, it's it's uh, it's actually a funny one. If you look at the squad we've had, uh, bar mate for the boys who have gone overseas, we've had a had a quite a young side through the last three four years, and that's kind of been a progression for us to get to I guess where we are because we've relied heavily on those young boys. And um, they've matured, especially now. You got you know Stolzer's playing regular. You got George, um, even young Luka Jurkovic, players like them that have really stood up and helped drive this team to where we are. So it's it's, it's fantastic to see. It's absolutely yeah, great to see. And what's what's the secret behind producing all those young youngsters? Is it great coaches? You know, not just the water. There must be uh, something good that's happening in North Geelong, right? I think it's a combination of everything. You've got boys that are wanting to play football and wanting to get better. And yeah. when you've got that um, mixed with good support from the club, good coaching, good players around, it just lifts the players up. It builds, it's a massive confidence build, uh, boost Sorry for, for these boys. And um, if you look at the, the team that we've got, the dressing rooms, it's unreal. You know, you, everyone's welcome. Um, and it's just, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a different place, honestly. It's just yeah. a, yeah. What about what about you, Nick? The Hammy? Um, how 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 much longer can we expect oh, you to be out of action? I don't know yet. I'm probably going to start considering retirement at this at this oh, rate. No, but, uh, <laughs> nah, Hopefully, hopefully not too long. Um, it's gotten a lot better over the last couple of days, so yeah. it could be just one of those things. Just take it day by day, and um, I guess see see how I'm feeling after a week, maybe two weeks. Um, I. Honestly, just want to get back out there. Want to get yeah. back out there. Yeah. But speaking of getting out there, is the action back on? Has the has the resume? Is it still half time? Uh, not just yeah, still half time. I think they well, played a few few minutes of extra time. I think they played yeah. about five minutes. So um, yeah. there's a couple there's a couple still to go. No worries. Well, keep us keep us up to date with the score um, throughout the show, and we might even uh, kind of if, if there's a goal or something like that, um, you know, we might we might might tune in. And, I'll be and, I'll be celebrating down in the corner, so you probably won't be able to get through to me. <laughs> record yourself. Record yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now, before we do go in on, I know Ante, you had something that you wanted to say. Uh, let's not forget Marcus Trukovic. He's one of the under twenty one players. And um, he's actually helped us out with the technology today. The reception was yeah, a little tech, bit bad there, so we got to mention. Thanks to Port Marcus. Yeah, he's uh, without without him, we wouldn't be here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my... big shout out to Marcus <laughs> Trupkovic there. Ante, you have one last question for Nick. I was just going to say, Nick, you got a beanie on and stuff. How cold is, is it down there? Far out. I mean, it's it's not as cold as I thought it was going to be, but those brisk uh, nights, football nights, are starting to come come back in. So yeah. I've got the I've got the double jacket on. I've got the tracksuit top and the puffer jacket, but I'm I'm sweating underneath. It is quite warm. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's nerves for the game, just watching the boys, or it's actually just just warmth. But um, no, nah, it's, it's winter's winter's starting to kick in, and. Yeah, um, it's that, yeah, Thank definitely. goodness, because uh, yeah. Yeah, up here in <laughs> up here in Sydney, we started in early February, and basically oh. there's been no um, you know end to the preseason. It's just been summer soccer and 38 degrees. It's just been yeah. ridiculous, and soccer's no not built for summer, not, right? Not good for no the good. players that type of weather. Mm. No, definitely no, not. No, def- definitely not. Nick, all the very best for the year ahead. Hopefully, you can get guys can get over those injuries. You can get some of the boys back as quickly as possible and um, get off the off the foot of the ladder because we want Dandenong City to come back up and we want all four Croatian clubs <laughs> to be in next year's NPL. Wouldn't that be great? That'd be, that'd be, that'd be Dar- awesome. Derby, Derby every two weeks. That'd oh, be good fun. That'd be really good, good fun. That'd be, be more, more Croatian clubs than Greek I don't think, clubs. I don't think I'll be able to eat that many Trevapa, to be honest. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's too right. Many. Mate, all the very best, and um, yeah, hopefully that hamstring uh, repairs itself very, very quickly, and you're back out on the park where you belong. Good on you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Keep, keep Good us luck, Nick. Thank you. Nick Kozdra, 
using Marcus Trupkovic's phone, we must add, um, getting us over the line with that one. There we go, live cross. We're going to hopefully do a lot more of those things throughout the course of the year. Until we're going to take a short break, and when we return, it's um, it's our second guest for tonight. He's the junior coordinator at St Albans Dynamo, and he's a very colourful character, very much loved down at Churchill Reserve. He's uh, he's got a massive personality, and his name is Stepan Gull. He'll be coming us, joining us straight after this commercial break, folks. Don't go away. It's episode thirty-one of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. And Ante, watching that advert there, the Slavicek Studio Architecture, despite all the high interest rates at the moment, makes you want to go out and get a mortgage and build a house just and get Robert to design your house. How good are some of those uh, designs? Yeah, absolutely. Robert, very talented. As you mentioned earlier, um, we actually used to do Crow 2000 Radio up here in Sydney together um, yeah. for yeah the early 2000s. And yeah, we had a lot of fun together. And um, yeah, Robert's just done fantastic stuff um, ever since he uh, opened up his business. So uh, well done. And, um, you know, th thank you so much for supporting as well, Robert. Slavicek Studio Architecture is the, is the episode sponsor of next week's episode and they have nominated Western Knights Football Club to be the club in focus. So we will be devoting quite a fair bit of next week's episode to the Western Knights and their fantastic start to the season. Now, on the weekend, it was a fantastic weekend down at Churchill Reserve in uh, Melbourne's western suburbs where the annual IND Juniors Day was held um, um, by St Albans Dynamo Soccer Club. And to tell us all about that, the co junior coordinator of the Dynamo St Albans Soccer Club, Stepan Gull joins us. Stepan, welcome to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's great to have you on the show. Ah, thanks for having me. Yeah, really good to be out uh, talking to you blokes about the um, the weekend. So yeah, it was a really really big weekend with with a lot of um, junior sides, and you know it was great to see the whole Croatian community sort of the mini ruse. There's a picture of all of us. That was towards the end of the day. So yeah. But um, yeah, it was a really good day. Stepan, yeah, those are those cheeky workers? ones that are at the end where I just wanted to relax and wind down after, you know, waking up at 6.30 to get everything ready with, with all our volunteers. So big, big thank you to our volunteers first and foremost um, that helped us throughout the day. So, you know, plenty of meat that was cooked and all the rest of it. So, yeah, it's come a long way since 2018, putting it, um, you know, the IND Gala Day and getting everything together and, you know, getting sort of Strathmore Split, Melbourne Knights, North Geelong, and Dandy City, as well as ourselves all together, um, you know. So it was a really, really big day. Now, these – these uh, my little boy was involved in this and we had a team that played there and it's, it's great that a lot of us, our generation now, starts to catch up and talk about, you know, once upon a time we used to catch up at, at – Croatian discos and meet at the bar. Now we're, uh, you know, where's my, where's yeah, my times, kid? Where's the running times over there? Times change, yeah, times change. Yeah, you know, yeah, forget it and start to catch up. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, so, that friendship, that friendship, sorry, Steph, I'm to cut you off. That friendship that we forged once upon a time at functions and this and that, the next generation now happy, having to, um, uh, are doing that at events like this, a gala events like this. And uh, it must be a really good feeling watching, you know, kids from different clubs that normally don't meet up with each other, you know, renewing friendships and acquaintances and etc. 
Yeah, it's um, you know, it was really good to see all the little kids sort of get together. We had, I think, we had almost, I think, we had sixty teams on the day participating. Yeah. You know, hundred, I think, hundred thirty-four games. You know, from from nine a.m. to pretty much four p.m. Um, you know, out of those sixty teams, we had you know eleven girls teams. So that was that was really really good uh, from that aspect. Um, but you know, I'm sure you know, like you said, you know, back in the day, it was it was a lot easier for sort of the creation community to sort of to get together and, and share times. Um, you know, and discos and all the rest of it, a metro and all the rest of those oh, places. Yeah. But I think you know, it's what was the Sydney equivalent, aren't there? What was what was the go-to place up there? Punchies, punchies, King, punchies? King Tom, yeah, yeah, all all of, all of the above, anywhere yeah. where we could get together. But um, yeah, so I was the girls. How important yeah. has the uh, proliferation of the girls' teams and obviously the popularity? I mean, this past probably five or six years, it's been become huge up in here in Sydney as well. Yeah, it's look. I think you know it's probably even more important now that the World Cup's happening this year, um, and it's probably taken a pretty big step forward with with girls' football. Um, you know, we as a club are trying to sort of drive as much sort of female participation as we can. Probably this year is the first time in a long time where we've had probably three junior teams, you know, participating. So we've got an under 10s and under 12s and under 14s team, as well as our senior women. Um, so, it's, so it's four across the board. So, I mean, it, it's it's really good, the participation, you know, that, that that's happening across the board. You know, not just that. You know, not just the Dynamo, but I'm sure at all the other clubs. So, um, you know, look, it's been yeah, it's been really, really good. So, you know, we're happy with that, and you know, the more the merrier, I guess. But yeah, it's it's good. It's funny you, you sort of parents come back to the club, and it's you don't see these people for a long time, and it's pretty much like you saw each other, yeah. you know, last week. So it's 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 really good. Now, it's just brilliant. the organisation. Yeah, I was going to say just the pure organisation of, of, of all that, obviously kitchen workers, bar workers, people who are going to, to um, set up the um, pitches and all of that kind of stuff. Um, what's involved in, in such a massive, massive day like that? When did you actually have to start? Was it the day before, the night before that uh, morning? Yeah, we started, I think, we started putting the goals out the night before. So, you know, this I think this is our so 2018 or seventh year, but I think COVID sort of interrupted a couple. So I think it's probably our fifth or sixth. Um, but with experience, you sort of learn that you get sort of the goals out on the Friday or the day before, put them up, yeah. you know, get all that done so it's all organised and then you sort of, you know, you get all the people helping on the Friday, then, you know, Saturday morning it's probably just putting up all the tents and all that sort of stuff to um, make sure that that's all ready to go. So when everyone comes, it's it's pretty much ready to go. It's not, you know, people running around like it used to be maybe, sort of bringing goals out and, and sort of, you know, having having a few like, cheeky rakia in the morning or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 really good. And like I said at the start, I think um, you know it really brings the community together. Anyone that's sort of part of St Albans Dynamo, Croatian or not Croatian, I think it, it really brought us together and it gave a really good insight to, to parents that aren't part of the Croatian community to sort of see what we're about um, and really sort of you know. I had some really good feedback from from a lot of parents that aren't of Croatian heritage and, and sort of said, you know, I can't believe that you guys put something like this on. Um, so, you know, it's it, it's a win win everywhere and, and everyone's yeah. happy on the day. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's very important. Absolutely. Good. Did you run out of anything, Stepan? Did you run out of Chivape? Did you um, run out of anything? Look, not 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 this year. Last year we ran out. Um, I think last year. This year we didn't. The weather wasn't the kindest to us this 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 um this time around. So we had a few few showers in the morning, and I think maybe you know we did it on a Saturday because we had you know Palm Sunday on on Sunday. So we did the right Croatian Catholic thing and, and did the um, did it the day before. So we probably had a lot of people that were still working on the Saturday. So we probably mm. lost a little bit of people. But yeah, that's I right. mean, at the, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, um, you know, the community still come out strong. And you know, one thing I, yeah. I think my mum said, she goes, you know, Swakati Chas in it, you know, well done in putting something like this together. As I mean, the whole club, you know, she thought 
things like this didn't happen anymore. So her and her and my dad sort of came and she goes, I can't believe this. So it's yeah, you know, when you get things like that, that's you know, that's that's the important important thing out of all this sort of acknowledgement thing. from the parents is very good, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, now, Stepan, now let's let's talk about the club as a whole. I mean, is there's apart from the soccer, there's a lot of things that often go there: um, club functions, um, community functions, with the famous St Albans Car Rally or Car Hot Rod uh, Show, whatever that happens there. But there's yeah, other yeah. things as well, and other community organisations you use it as well, including other soccer clubs. Yeah, how important of a hub is the club? Is the soccer club to the Croatian community in that part of Melbourne? Look, I think I think it plays a massive part, you know, for the whole community and and making sure that there's, like you said, a hub for people to come into and and sort of you know share stories, share you know not war stories, but share stories of the past and share stories to 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 the kids. And you know, it's amazing when you come in on a Thursday night here and you know people, the kids finish training and it's it's that loud in in the sala here that it's. You know, I want to push my training out, so I finish later, so I'm not in the in the sala when it's going chaotic and screaming kids. But it's it's really good to see. You know, you see them playing, you know, soccer on the dance floor, and it reminds you back when when um, when when you know when I was a kid, and I'm sure yeah. the rest of us. It sort of brings you back to to the early days when when we were younger. So you know, it's. It's it's yeah I think build, yeah building that nationalism and 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 understanding sort of where you come from is it's very important I think yeah. you know whether well, Croatian or whatever but I mean it's yeah pretty important so and yeah, you've got that, uh, beautiful go. Hall of Fame up up in the club there are you looking to uh, increase the number of jerseys up there Stepan? Ah, oh, look, I, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. We had you know we've had a few players come through through the doors so. Um, you know, we've got some, you know, really good juniors coming through. Um, it was good listening to North Geelong as well. And, and, you know, they've got some good juniors. And I think, you know, across the board, I think it's, you know, we've got, like I said, good juniors coming through, gives them somewhere to come and, and sort of not, you know, be on the streets or, or something like that, which yeah. I think plays, which plays probably a bigger part, you know. You know, we, we won't probably see Mark Vadukas or Yossi Scores, you know, maybe we but at the end of the day, we give them something to come to to play and 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 form friendships. You know, at the end of the day, come of here probably people who have played with. So, yeah, um, yeah, that that that's what speaks volumes, and you know, friendships for life. So that's that's the most important thing. Connections. Now, correct. now, now, just just to illustrate how much Dinamo is is is, you know, is really involved in the community as well. Um, to, a big shout out to Ilya Dragic, which is the club president. Um, who, who approached me oh, a few months ago and said, you know, we are willing to sponsor some episodes this year coming up. So St. Albans Dinamo have sponsored three episodes of the Ozcrow Soccer Show. So shortly in the next few weeks, we'll have a, a, a show devoted to um, St. Albans Dinamo in much the same way that next week we've got a Western United, a Western Knights. I was going to say Western United, isn't it? They push. <laughs> <laughs> wrong show, wrong show. West, wrong show. Western Knights. John Aloisi. John Aloisi is coming on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look, there's a Croatian connection there as well, but I suppose there is, there is. Western Western Knights from Perth, they'll be featured in next week's show, and then we'll probably get St Albans on coming on next week. But thank you so much to, from, from on behalf of myself and um, Auntie and everyone involved here at Osco Soccer Show to um, everyone at St Albans Dinamo for supporting the show. We look forward to having you guys on in a few weeks' time. But uh, in the meantime, all the very, very best for the rest of the season, rest of the uh, rest of the year, and um, hopefully, um, you know, uh, NPL, as far as the NPL, the, the team can go a little bit further north as opposed to south. And, uh, you know, we'll, yeah, have a, we'll, have a, we'll have an electrifying NPL at least the second half of the season. And they're still leading 1-0 in the Australia Cup, so yeah, that's good news. 1-0, yeah. Who scored that, do we know? Uh, um, I'm trying to find out, but no one's replying to me yet. <laughs> All I've got is as soon as you there. find out, send send it to us in a chat in the co- in the comment section or whatever. If anyone there is um is either at the game St um, Albans and Frankston Pines or indeed the North Geelong uh, Altona City game, and you know the scorers, pop it there in the comment section so we can all see. But uh, on the, on that note, Stepanet, once again, yeah. thanks for um coming on board, um being one of, of one of our guests on our first episode this year. 
wishing you all the very best. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All the best. Stepan. Good on See you. you. Stepan Galda, Juniors Coordinator out at uh, at St. Albans Dinamore. Aunt it, it, it is important, isn't it? Like if you if we put up one of those photos again of um of the kids there, I mean there's the girls and, and you mentioned about how crazy girls soccer has gone in recent years and it's great to see. I mean, you know, 20, 30 years ago, if 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 a Croatian girl said I want to play soccer to a dad, the dad would have said, you know, go to the kitchen. That's where it's you a it's a bottom. It's not like that, you know. And um, and as a you know, proud dad of a young girl myself, it's it's great that these girls are getting so much um, opportunity. But but our kids in general, third generation in some cases, fourth generation, um, the community is the way it is, unfortunately or fortunately. And really, the football clubs are the the the, one of the, if not the, the main catalyst for bringing the Croatian community together. Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Torch. I mean, it's uh, brilliant to see not only, you know, um, in the grandstands, you know, it's actually on the pitch, as uh, Stepa mentioned, building those memories, building those networks, building, you know, and you don't know down the track, you know, um, you, you could be friends for life, you know, you could yeah. be uh, business partners, whatever the case may be. But uh, it's just brilliant that um, people are connecting. And, you know, these clubs, obviously, predominantly, you know, yeah, have a lot of Croatians in them, but there's a lot of uh, non-Croatians coming in as well. And, you know, uh, it's just um, excellent to see that, you know, those people are actually um, enjoying the Croatian culture and the Croatian clubs as well. Yeah, something that Stjepan said, how someone of non-Croatian background actually came up to him and said, I can't believe you guys are organising something like this. This is fantastic. The one club that is really on Monday, on Monday it's going to be the epicentre of the Victorian Croatian community and a club that has really done a lot in bringing the community together. And on Monday, all roads lead to Summer Street. Um, um, it's Melbourne Knights, Melbourne Croatia, celebrating its 70th anniversary. Um, on on you know such a it's going to be an auspicious auspicious occasion. I'll kick that out when Sister Club North Geelong Warriors come along as well. And there's going to be all day events. Now we'll find out all about that and more on the other side of the break when we speak to the president of the Melbourne Knights Soccer Club, a um, man very well known to the Croatian community, um, not just in Victoria, but Australia-wide, Pave Yusuf. He'll be joining us very, very shortly. Folks, don't go away. It's episode 31 of the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Now, Antet, when I think I've got a hectic schedule and there is just not enough hours in the day to get everything done, I just think of our next guest. This man it must be the busiest man in the Croatian community in Australia. There is just so much going on at his club. And uh, let's find out all about the big birthday bash happening on Monday from the man himself, the president of the Melbourne Knights Soccer Club, Pave Yusup. Arve, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us here on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Thanks, Tonchi. Hi, Arthur. How are you going? Hey, very well. How are you, Pave? Very good. Now, uh, you, 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 uh, mate, well, I, I don't um, joke when I say you are very, very busy because there's been so much going on, on at the Melbourne Knights in the last few months. But let's talk about the future. Let's talk about Monday, Deseti Trava, 10th of April, um, 70 years ago, Melbourne, Croatia was formed in Footscray, in, 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 a, in a house in Footscray, um, and the big 70th birthday celebrations happening this Monday. Tell us everything what's going on on Monday. Yeah, so uh, obviously 
when the draw came out, we were really lucky. Uh, so the draw, the way that it works with the Federation is you get drawn a number and they your number corresponds with a certain fixture and you follow a matrix. And it ended up being that uh, we drew North Geelong for the weekend of Easter and immediately we saw it was Desti Trawan and we were like, you know, we have to play that game that day. Um, you know, we couldn't have picked a uh, better, better opponent other than, you know, Dinamore or, or North Geelong. So it's really... Really um, exciting from that perspective, getting the community together, getting people together. I think it's going to be um, a really big day. We've got uh, kids' rides, you know, for free uh, prior to the game. Uh, we've got uh, Steve Tivanowitz from Sydney coming down to, to play the harmonica outside, extended beer garden um, that we did a, a version of for against Bentley. Um and, yeah, look, a birthday cake after the game in the club rooms. I think uh, 10 years ago we did it and it was quite good. So hopefully this this time it's a bit of a bit of a fresh start afterwards regardless of, mm. of what the result is. Absolutely. That is awesome, Pave. Very exciting stuff. So what about on the field? Do you, uh, do you think the boys can do it against North Geelong? Obviously they're going to be up for the game being a derby. Yeah, look, I, I think um, this league, anyone can beat anyone. You know, it's a tough, a tough league. Um, I know North Geelong, you know, have parted way, ways with their coach, so um, and their results are, are, are not great, and and they're, and they're probably hurting. So it's not like oh, it's a given, you know, that we're going to win that game. I don't think so at all. I don't think any of our players think that, and we need to respect every opponent, but especially a, a sister club like North Geelong. So um, yeah, I hope we win. Of course, their seventieth seventieth birthday, um, but whatever happens, happens. I can't really influence what happens on the pitch. Yeah, but it has been a great start after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but back on the field, this has been a great start to to, to the campaign. Um, sitting fifth at the moment, and um, and some some good wins, a couple of um, 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 poor losses, but nonetheless, overall, it's been a really really good start to the season. You've got a young coach this year who's come come from Queensland. Um, he's very very highly credentialed, and he's only I, I think some of the players are older than he's. Tell <laughs> us more about this this coach. Um, and he just seems like a real long-term prospect for the club. How did, how did you find out about him? Uh, he absolutely is a long-term prospect for the club. I've kind of tracked his progress in Queensland over the last four, three and a half years, kept in contact with him, spoken with him, followed his results. Uh, not only his results, but he's had, I think, I think there's th he's in the last two or three years, he's had three players that have gone from his club in the NPL directly to an A-League for a professional mm -hmm. contract. So not only are his players quality, but they're prepared for that environment. So he 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 he's more than just a coach, in in the sense of oh he coaches a team and sets up a system and tries to do something. He's a bit of a mentor to his players, and his ambition is is to coach at a higher level. Not not in the sense of not with the Knights, but with a long term view of of a of a second division, uh, professionalizing, having a good environment, and he's you know all over the kind of statistical side of things. And and uh, those so-called one percenters, he puts in a lot of time and effort to try and get the maximum he can with the time that he has. And he's full time. You know, he just coaches the Knights and that's all he does. So, you know, he watches the game back a few times. He watches every other game in the league and, and all those kind of things. So, and is that my, like 30 something? Is that right? Or he's, 30, he's 35. He's wow. 35. Wow. Um, he, he took over as an Olympic coach. Or he took on the job at Olympic uh, in Brisbane as a 29 year old. And made, I think, five or six grand finals in a row with wow. a team he essentially built. Um, so, for example, Jez Lofthouse at Brisbane Raw is one of his players. Keegan Yelichich at uh, Perth Raw is one of his players that, mm -hmm. that he basically created, essentially, um, you know, mentored, molded, and, and brought to a certain level. Um, even, even just the mental side of things that he's contributed to. So, couldn't be happier with him. Boys are happy. The team's playing good soccer. Um, I think against Avondale on the weekend, yeah, we lost 3-0 and people look at that result and go, oh, you know, got pumped. But if you read the game uh, and you left at halftime, you would not – you if you said the result at the end, you would say, oh, yeah, Knights won 3-0. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of chances, didn't put them away. They – they their first goal that they scored, they were a little bit uh, a little bit lucky in the, in the lead-up. There was a foul that wasn't given and then sort of kind of changed the course of the game. But in the first half, we absolutely dominated them. Um, but the chances weren't put away and they, and they punish you. But – I think as the team gels, just don't forget we've. I think we've got seven or eight new players in the first eleven, um, so it's essentially a new team. And to be in the position that we are in now, with the way that it's kind of coming together, I'm pretty satisfied. And I think most most people would be in this early stage of the year. 
Absolutely. You briefly mentioned the second division there. Uh, what are the next um, areas that we have to, or mm. hoops that we have to jump over and, and tell me how, you know, are Melbourne Knights already preparing for the second division and, you know, what, what else do we need to do to get up there? We absolutely are. Uh, funnily enough, I was at the club just a bit before and I came, just had a committee meeting, board meeting, and we ran our scoreboard uh, for the first time. So we've got an electronic scoreboard now after 70 years. It'll be ready. Oh, wow. Terrific. Yeah, it's pretty big. What? It's uh, Second division for sure. That, 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 that'll get us in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just tell them you've got a scoreboard and they'll let you in. Um, so with regards to second division, it's funny. It's, it's the most... In Australian soccer, generally, it's the most interesting topic and it gains the most interest yeah. generally. A league yeah. or fan or not, people are interested where it's going. I'm in constant kind of contact with um, Nick Galatis from AAFC, basically weekly discussing where it's at, how it's going. Um, I'm confident in 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 the 20 20 page document that we put together as our proposal and submission um, that we have a very very strong case. Um, I think, I think it'll be a 12-team league meant to be starting uh, March next year. Mm -hmm. There's a potential um, there's a potential for the get for the for the league to be in summer, but at this stage it'll be in winter um, to begin with. Uh, there is a lot of interest around Australia. There's a few a few left field kind of I think Yante, you'd know the the, the Cronulla Sutherland one is a, is an interesting yes. one. I reckon they'll get Definitely. in only because yes. only because of the cash. They'll, they'll get in. They've got big backing. Yeah, the the, yeah. the club, yeah. the the, and the area that it's in as well. Is... Yeah, the area that it's in yeah, as well. Absolutely. That's where Greg Foster mm -hmm. wanted to have his A League team before Macarthur. Mm -hmm. So it may be. Have they got the support though? No, I mean they have got the money. Is no. that where all that matters? They'll try and get the rugby league support, just like your old failed, yeah. you know, Parramatta Powers and things like that. You know, <laughs> we did have one semi success in uh, Northern Spirit up here, which uh, for mm. a couple of years got some decent crowds, but after that just fell away. So, so yeah, uh, I mean, it's similar to your Carlton, far. Carlton's and Collingwoods, right? Oh, that Carlton Collingwood, <laughs> yes, remember that. Oh my goodness! Now, Parve, with with regards to the national second division, there's talk that if in a club is successful in getting into the national second division, then they have to relinquish their NPL license. Um, well, does that mean true. that Melbourne Knights? Sorry, it's partly true. It's not yeah. fully true. So, so the yeah, way it works is essentially, essentially our senior men's team will no longer be in the NPL; they'll leave. Everything below that will mm -hmm. stay the same. So our 21s will still be in the NPL, our 18s. Ah, oh, all right, cool. So it's just a senior men's yeah. team, which is something that I, I was actually quite heavy on. I wanted that to be the case um, in our lobbying because for many years we've been we've, we've kind of take the, taken the principled stance where we don't want A-League teams playing in the NPL with their reserves team. Mm -hmm. And so now yep. what well, we're going to have our cake and eat it too when we're in the same position, I don't think that's right. Uh, our senior men should be out of there. We put all, our, all of our... Uh, you know, concentration and, and and energy in towards the national second division team. We're not we're not hedging our bets here. We're going all in for the second division, and that's it. Uh, because I know that right. and a few yeah, other right. clubs wanted to, you know, keep a team in the NPL and and play in the second division. To, to that, for me, that doesn't work anyway. I don't want to be running a team, mm. two teams at the same time. And part of the criteria is professional contracts, right? Does that mean professional mm -hmm. players as well, full-time professional, or does it mean they can still be semi-professional? Well, without giving too much away, that's um, worded in a way to appease a certain party within Australian soccer, and it doesn't really change anything that we do. Mm. If, you, yeah. if you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, there's a lot happening, as we said. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot happening. At, so watch this space as far as the National Second Division, but certainly exciting times. But anyone even remotely contemplating whether or not to go to Melbourne Knights on Monday, well, there's a great reason to see the new electronic scoreboard in place. That, that's going to be fantastic. Kids' rides plus the big game at 4 o'clock, North Geelong and um, uh, North Geelong Warriors versus Melbourne Knights. But um, another big thing that happened recently was the visit of the uh, Croatian Football Federation delegation to Sydney and to Melbourne. Um, we had former Melbourne Knights legend Josip Šimunić um, in attendance, along with Zlatko Dalic, Stipe Pletikosa, and Marian Kustic as well. Now, one of the things that's come out... Of, well, first of all, let's talk about that. How was that? Because there was a big function at the Footscray dorm mm -hmm. as well. Um, it was a season launch, wasn't it? And, and everyone was there in attendance. Wow, that was... <laughs> you talk about season launches. <laughs> and uh, Melbourne, Croatia brings the Croatian national coach. I mean... These other clubs must have been a little bit envious. No, I don't think so. 
I don't think they were envious. I think they were all there. Um, now, look, I think we, I think we, I've spoken to a few of the the people involved in these other in the other creation clubs in Victoria and around Australia. And I think everyone wants um, Melbourne and Sydney Croatia to be at that top level because that's what those clubs were built for. They're not they're not built to be in this league and competing against uh, Dinamo and North Geelong in the sense of smear time I get under the basically, mm-hmm. you know. And that, that's where the kind of the friction um, arises, I suppose. Not not in a bad way. Like I look at other communities, and I think we're really, really uh, good in sticking together. You know, we might have our ex- internal disagreements, but anything external, you know, if we go to the federation, we're always a united front, which is yep. which is really good. Um, so from that side of things, I think the, the for it, life will be better for everybody. Um, and I don't think that that um, anyone was envious. Let's say, but. I'm, I'm talking about the Hellas's and the Highlanders oh, and the those clubs. No, not I'm not talking about our clubs. I'm talking about the uh, yeah those clubs. Oh, Maybe I know. I'm reading a couple of comments and there were like um, commentators from A League clubs, A League clubs saying, "Wow, like this club, NPL club, is has got that drawing power." And this is what we've been saying. It's our community. That's that's what mm. it is. And for so long we've been shunned. And now we're, we're we're on the on the edge of, of of getting back to where we belong. So I think that's, that's, where, the, that's where the friction with with the A League comes from because they know that our community, not just ours, the Italians and Greeks as well, to a lesser degree, have better networks. It's as simple as that. Mm. We can pick up the phone and get to people that they can never get to. They they haven't got those networks. They haven't got the history. They haven't got. Um, they may have the bank account, but they've got nothing else. You know, they can't call like here. Yeah, last year, I called. Uh, I was looking for a striker. I called Zilko Arjic and I said, can you find me a striker in Croatia? And so he gave me four or five options. Can they do that? No. no. You know? And he's not the only one. There's 20 people I can call over there. And it's likewise, Sydney, Croatia. Um, so, yeah, look, it was uh, last year, the Joe Shimonich, Petar Kirpan and Ante Krušić came to Australia for like a pre kind of meeting to discuss how this camp was going to work to set it up. So that was uh, mid last year, uh, with a view to starting in in January, and we only found out that the I'd, I'd asked them to to bring uh, Cool Stitch. Dalich wasn't even kind of on the cards. He decided himself to come. So after no that way. was his own decision to come. He wanted to come to the, within the community, and I said to him whilst he was here, that was a I don't think our community realizes yet the 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 largesse that that is and the respect that he's shown us. For the first community for him to come to is is Australia, so I think that's mm. a big deal um, that we'll kind of get over time. Um, so yeah, look, they had the, the they ran the camps. We had six six coaches here, uh, basically the whole top brass of the Croatian Soccer Federation from the board side of things, as well as the national team coach, as well as the whole technical team. So you had Politico and Kirpan, which are the two top um, technical directors in various kind of roles. As well as their head in, head instructors, so um, I think it was a good start, and it kind of starts off with a bang. And this will be a thing that happens every year. It'll give an opportunity for our kids to kind of learn something um, from some some top European coaches, and hopefully, uh, again, strengthen and 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 renew old networks. And part of that Domovina diaspora bridge, I guess, is 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 the fallout of that is an Australian Croatian under fourteen select that has been selected between boys from Sydney, uh, Melbourne, and Geelong. And on Tuesday, uh, you you're all jetting out for a, um, a special tour in 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 Croatia where where you're going to Vukovar, mm-hmm. um, you know, the city of heroes. Uh, to take part in a in a in an inter- invitational tournament, tell us a bit more about that. This is massive. So this is the twenty third annual Turni Hrvatskih Branitelja in Vukovar. It's run by Hvidra, so like the Croatian RSL, and the city of Vukovar, as well as the HNS, like a three way kind of thing. Uh, every HNL um, club sends their junior fourteens there, as well as an Australian, now Australian. Uh, Swiss, Austrian, German, USA, and Canadian kind of select sides. So there's 16 teams in the tournament. Uh, goes over three days, which is the kind of traditional tournament time in Croatia is around Easter, their Easter school holidays. And yeah, so we're treating, we're going on Tuesday. Tournament starts. So we get to Vukovar on on uh, the 13th of April for a tour of the city with the mayor, where they're going to show us, you know. Uh, 
of Chara and a few of the other museums and things like that, and a bit of an opening ceremony. Then games on the 14th and the 15th, um, possibly a semi-final if we get through, and then the finals um, for, and a third and fourth place on the Sunday, which will still be there for the Sunday regardless if we get through, just to watch, um, you know, assuming it's Dinamo and Heiduk. Mm. Far out. That is amazing. How exciting I mean, for the yeah. for the players. Far out. Yeah. It's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 20 years or so ago, I mean, Melbourne, Croatia organised, um, and Sydney, Croatia organised youth to, um, teams that went to the Kvarnes, Scariviera. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those boys, well, there's lots and lots of names that came out of that, but um, one of those guys that was involved was a Melbourne Knights youth player, Josip Lonchadic, who happens to be one of the coaches, is that right, who's involved mm-hmm. with this tour. So um, it's it's just fantastic now that the next generation is able to get such exposure. That's that's just absolutely incredible. And as you said, I think we realise just the scope of what is happening there at the Knights at the moment. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing where regardless if, you know, we might go there with this with, with the 14th team, we might be way off the mark, but it's still a it's still a once-in-a-lifetime, you'll never forget experience as a kid um, to go to Croatia, mm. some people without their parents, um, to go and play soccer. And, and see something and learn something and mature and meet people. You know, you, you, I went to the, like, I went to the Sydney Olympics uh, final of the soccer. It was Nigeria and, no, sorry, it was Cameroon and Spain. Anyway, I looked back recently and I looked at some of the players that played. I didn't realise that Eto played in that game, Iniesta, Xavi, all these players. It'll be similar. There'll be players that come out of this tournament that... Um, these kids will look back on and go, oh, he plays for the national team now, like the next, maybe not the next Modric, but in that vein. Absolutely. No, very, very true. Um, Jerry Belokopic has sent through a message saying Pave doing a top job, so thanks for messaging Jerry's Jerry. A good man. And he is a good man. And Josip has also, Zilic has said, terrific initiative, Pave, long may it continue, see you Monday. So he'll be there on Monday as well, partying. So, Pave, what I wanted to ask is you've started the 70th anniversary with Slotko Dalic, then you had mm-hmm. Bebek, and mm-hmm. now you've got the big uh, Festa happening on Monday. So what mm-hmm. else is in store for the 70th? But have we got more plans? Is there uh, going to be some yeah, more bands? Is, you know, what's you happening? Do. What's happening? So we've got on the 27th of May, uh, oh, maybe I should go chronological. Um, <laughs> all right, this, this is an exclusive. This hasn't been announced yet. Uh, we've done a deal to bring out Tram 11. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tram 11 is going to be coming out uh, on the 11th and 12th of May uh, mm-hmm. for a concert in Melbourne and Sydney. Um, so if anyone doesn't know, they're a Croatian rap group. Uh, they've been around for about 20 years. They brought out an album last year that was um, really well received. And then the Yugoslavs in Croatia actually listened to the text and the lyrics and they said, oh, no, we can't have that. So they got cancelled, fully oh, cancelled. Oh, wow. Their label kicked them out. They, 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 you know, basically on the street. And they ended up doing a deal with the label. They got the rights back for their um, album, but they have to sell it on themselves. And they're Croatian like us, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it's our responsibility as a, as a community that's strong enough to bring out people like that because yeah. they, they keep the flame going at, back home. Um, so that's one. Number two. Uh, we've got on the 27th of May at the Dom in Footscray, uh, our 50th, sorry, 50th, 70th anniversary actual gala, like Zalava style kind of event where it will be, um, you know, a kind of more Svechano kind of thing. Uh, and then later in the year, uh, I'll probably bring out another couple of bands as well. There you go. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, bring them on. Bring them on. Rob Stocker's message saying, great work, Pave, see you Monday, <laughs> Juvila Croatia. So there you go. Well, Pave, now, um, before we do go, apparently, apparently, there's 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 talk of expat um, expat Australian Croatians in Zagreb preparing a a trivia night or a special mm-hmm. celebration of Melbourne Croatia in Zagreb. Now, the mm-hmm. last time they organised this, apparently, the great Mark Viduka attended, and there's talk that he'll he'll be in attendance as well. Will you be mm-hmm. there around about that time when 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 that that trivia night is held in? I think it's the Bornstein Wine Bar. For yep. those of you that know Zagreb well, yeah, I'll be there. They are so that's been organised by one of our ex board members, yours, Kolakosic, who moved back maybe about five six years ago, and Rob Goyevich. So Steve Goyevich's brother Rob was involved in the Croatian Olympic Committee for many years. 
I think he still may be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they've got they've done a really good job with connecting with a lot of old players. So Ante Kuzilek, for example, he played in the seventies. Did an interview in the Viesnik this week. He'll be there. Um, you mentioned Viduka Shimonic, uh, Frank Juric, Mark Shilic is over there. Um, there's a few uh, Krishmir Marusic, Jelko Arjic. Um, no, Jorzo, that's, Jorzo that, that's, a, that's a great team. Yeah, yeah. so there's so there'll be probably about 30, 40 people at this uh, at this trivia. It's good good to get together and celebrate the seventieth in in Zagreb, which will be a little bit kind of surreal, I suppose. Fantastic. We, we, we might have to reach out to uh, yours or there and uh, and do a, a live cross or something like that if we just happen to have it. Uh, here we go. Josip Jelic says uh, we'll just bring that up there. Uh, yours or Josko Kolakusic is behind the trivia night. Does a great job connecting Croats when we get to the motherland. That he does absolutely. So, Pardon? so is yours or the the Tony Barber of the night, or who, who else <laughs> now you're showing your age, aren't you? Uh, far out, Tony <laughs> Barber. Yeah, uh, Pave, wishing you all the best, mate. Over the next week, it's going to be a very, very hectic, um, hectic period for you. But I, no doubt it's going to be a very rewarding one. And, mate, um, I think on behalf of the Australian-Croatian community, thank you for what you're doing for Australian-Croatian football and the Australian-Croatian soccer scene. Well done. Thank you. Absolutely. I just want to say one more thing before I go. I think uh, just a little bit historical about the club. I think it's really important for us to remember that. So it's our 70th, 70th birthday on, on Monday, 10th of April. That isn't a coincidence. You know, I know Sydney Croatia got dragged through the mud, but people can like it or not like it. But we as Croatians would not be in Australia if it wasn't for the 10th of April. Because if it wasn't for the 10th of April, there wouldn't be a Bleiberg. There wouldn't be persecution, whether economic or political, we wouldn't be here. So I fully expect after this game that there'll be people in the media saying, oh, they're fascists, they're 10th of April. I will defend it to the, to the end. Uh, Seven Lee Street where the club was formed, was also the headquarters of the Dom at the same time because the Dom didn't have a, a, a facility um, at all. Later on, they moved to Lonsdale Street, then Albert Park, then Footscray. So uh, we just need to embrace that is, is my thing. You know, 10th of April was a massive day for Croatian people symbolically and I'm not going to shy away from that. And if people don't like that, I, I don't care because we've, we, 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 you know, it's really ironic my... my or any father-in-law, he said it a while, I mean, about 10 years ago, it was, it was, it, the Australia allowed us to be Croatian when we weren't allowed to be Croatian in our homeland. And now we're not allowed to be Croatian in, in Australia, but in your homeland you are. So everything's yeah. gone backwards. Yeah. Everything's so we, flipped around. Well, but we are who we are. People can like it or not like it. Um, our club has a, has, a, has a social and political purpose, and we won't shy away from that. Uh, and that's just the way that it is. And and if that hurts us in the long run, well, it's, it's happened in the past. I think our, our, our ideals and our club and our community endures because of our principles, not because of, not because, you know, we, we are, are, are pushed in this direction or that direction. Uh, I think that, you know, when, when it comes to questions like that, people within the community are, are receptive to, to leadership and saying, this is who we are. This is what we believe. And, you can say what you want and, and you know, it doesn't change what we think. You know, I'm not telling you to think that, but that's our position and that's all there is to yeah. it. Absolutely inspirational yeah, uh, words well from Bobby. a community leader. And it reminds me of that song, Malo nasi al nasima nije važno srušit ćemo snove svima. Uh, on that note, Pave, thank you very much for that. Good night and sretan uskras tebi and everyone um, involved at the Melbourne Knights. Thank you very much. Thanks for your support and I'll see you soon. Will do. Sretan uskras. Pave Yusuf, the Fantastic. president of, of the Melbourne Knights Soccer Club. Wow, what a great interview that was, Auntie. What a great way to finish off the first episode of Season 2 for the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, has been you know, we probably went a little bit longer than we expected, but you know it's been absolutely fantastic. So, folks out there who've tuned in throughout Great the news. night, thank North you and so Dynamo much. are both up two nil. So, um, two there nil. you go. Update from Josip Zilic. Yeah, so they're both up two nil. Yes. Oh, fantastic! They will progress through to the next round of the Just Australia. Just quickly. If anyone is interested in a signed Hayduk jersey for a great cause, go into Crow ANZ Social Golf Club on Facebook. And um, at the moment, the bid is $2,000 and bids are closing on Good Friday at 10 a.m. So if you are after this season's Hayduk split signed jersey, 
go onto the Crow ANZ Social Golf Club. And tonight we've got the big uh, cup game, Shubenik versus Dinamo. Go Shubenik, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, oh, folks. On that note, let's uh, let's close tonight's show with um with yeah, Seraton Uskars to you all. Happy Easter to you all. We will see you back in a week's time next Wednesday. And thank you for being a part of the Oz Crow Soccer Show's very very first episode of season 2023. Good night. And thanks for the nice comments as well. Thank you so much, Seraton Uskars. Good night. Like a notch. Thank you.